Thanks, Phil. So ever since the introduction of the iPad, we've seen its potential for digital photography. To be able to have something so light and portable to carry around with you instead of lugging around a laptop is really amazing. With iPhoto for iOS, we had the opportunity to reinvent it and take advantage of multi-touch and take it to a whole new level. I'd like to show it to you. We'll launch the application and we start out with these beautiful shelves that show you all the photos that are on your device. We've got your albums. We can switch over, take a look at your events. You get to see all the photos that you have here. If we tap on one, we can take a look. We bring up the editing interface. It's very customizable. I can swipe in from the side to bring in a thumbnail view. I can change the size of this to change the number of columns here. I can even flip this from left to right for left-handed or right-handed layout. Now, these are photos from a trip that I recently took to Antarctica. I took along a digital SLR, took over 3,500 pictures, and used the camera connection kit. Uh, it was field testing the application there. When you're dealing with lots and lots of photos like that, one of the first things you want to do is find the best photos. And we have some great ways for doing that. You can simply tap on things to take a look at them. But if you want to compare photos, I can just press and hold and bring them up side by side. A lot of times you have a situation like this where I've got a bunch of pictures of this seal and I could manually press and hold to compare those, but I can also let iPhoto do it for me. If I just double tap there, it's going to actually analyze the thumbnails and find all the similar photos and put them up side by side for me so I can compare them. Now, when I want to go through and find the best ones, like the second one in the first column, he's not looking at the camera, I'll just swipe down. That one disappears. The one at the bottom, same thing, he's not looking at the camera, swipe down. If I want to see them larger, I just tap. It goes to a larger side, I, size, I can swipe. His eyes are kind of closed there, so I'll swipe down, I'm not looking at the camera. So now I'm down to two. The one at the top's nice, but I think I like the expression on the one at the bottom better. So I'm going to swipe down on the one on the top. Now I can zoom in by just pinching apart. And you can see the amount of the kind of detail that I have here. If I bring up my info panel, the reason for this, this was shot on a Nikon D300. It's a 12 megapixel image, and all 12 megapixels are available here. In fact, I can work with images up to 19 megapixels on the, on the iPad. And on the retina display, these images look absolutely amazing. So now that we've chosen the image, the best, the best one of that group, I'll touch the flag button to mark it. Once I've chosen a number of photos and flagged them, I can tap at the top of the thumbnail column and select to just view the flagged photos. Photos like this uh, penguin staring contest here. Once you've uh, got the photos, we have some great sharing options. I'll tap the share button. We have things like email and Twitter, Flickr, Facebook that you can send your photos to. Once you've chosen the best photos, you want to make them look even better. And we've got some great tools for that. Jump over to another al uh, album here. So here's a nice photo, but we can make that look even better. Down at the bottom along my toolbar, I'm going to tap the auto enhance button and we're going to automatically adjust the contrast and color of the image to make it look better. But you'll notice the horizon line is not quite level. So I'm going to, down along the, in the lower left here, I've got my tools. I'm going to tap on the first one, which is my crop tool. And iPhoto is going to automatically analyze the photo and find the horizon line. It's drawn a line across, and I have a button on the right side. And I just touch that button, and it straightens the horizon line for me. So I'm... So, with just two touches, I'm able to go from this to this. And that's another feature. In the upper right corner, there's a button, Show Original. Anytime, I can always compare the original to the one that I'm working with. Now, the Crop Tool also has some great multi-touch features to it. So I can just use my fingers to pinch apart and pan around. If I turn my hand, I can actually rotate. I've got a dial at the bottom that allows me to do the same as well. I can grab a corner and change the cropping. Or if I want to go to some standard sizes, I tap the gear in the lower right corner, and it brings up some standard sizes. So say I want to do a square crop there, and I can just reframe. And just like that, I can crop the photo. Now, another thing that you run into a lot with photos is things that are too light or too dark. And the second tool I have is my exposure tool. And this brings up our unified control at the bottom that allows me to adjust the shadows, the highlights, the brightness, and the contrast. But I can do this in a great multi-touch way as well. The shadows in the lower left corner are a bit too dark. So I'm just going to touch my finger in the lower left, and it brings up these controls, and I just slide upwards 
in there, and up come the shadows. The same, the same thing works for color. I'll switch to my color tool, and now I'm just gonna touch and slide up, and it's gonna adjust the saturation. So I'm able to go from this to this with just two touches of my finger. It's really fun and really easy. Now sometimes you want to adjust just a portion of an image. And these multi-touch controls allow me to do that. I can touch in the sky and just slide to the left and I'm going to be able to darken or lighten my sky. So just with one slide of my finger, I go from this to this with a nice deep sky. Really, really easy. Another color issue that you run into is white balance. We've got some great tools for white balance, but we have a brand new one, which is a skin tone white balance. And I just touch on the skin tone control, up pops this little loop, and as I drag this around, it's live white balancing on whatever's under the loop, and I just drag this onto anything where there's skin tone, and I'm able to go from this greenish cast over to a really nicely balanced image. Really, really easy. Now sometimes you run into situations in an image like this one, where part of the image is nice, like the sky, but part of it's kind of dark, like the face. We've got some great tools for that. I'm gonna bring up my brushes. I've got this great brush palette that comes up. I've got repair, red eye, saturation, lightness, and sharpness that I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my lighten brush, and now I'm just gonna use my finger to work on the image. I just rub over the image, and these brushes are set up to work in a very soft way, so you just go back and forth a couple of times, on the image, and so I'm able to go from this to this and get a very natural looking change to the image just using my finger with the multi-touch on the screen. So a great set of brushes that I can use, and like everything else on iPhoto, it's all non-destructive, so I can go back and make changes to any of this at any time that I'd like. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show is we have some great effects. And that's my fifth tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and choose my effects, and up pops my swatch book of effects that I, we have here, and we've got a whole bunch of different ones that I can choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my black and white card. Now, to apply a black and white, I just touch on the little film strip down here, and it applies a black and white. Professional photographers know there are lots of different ways to do black and white. You can mix the red, green, and blue very differently to get different effects. And I can do that by just sliding my finger along this strip down here. And I can get all kinds of different effects. I just slide my finger to where I like it with kind of a dark sky. I kind of like the way that looks. And then I've got a couple of extra options here, like I can touch on the vignette. And then just using my fingers, I can pinch and get a great effect just with a couple of movements of my finger. So we've got some great photographic effects. We've also got some great artistic effects, like, a like tilt shift and watercolor that can be applied with just a couple of touches of your finger. So some great effects in there as well. Now, once you've uh, chosen your images and made them look good, you want to be able to share them. And we have a great new way of doing that. Switch over here to an event. I've got a set of pictures from a trip to Thailand. And I'm going to go ahead and select to share those. I'm going to choose Journal, choose All. We'll give this a name. And when I say create journal, it's automatically going to lay these photos out onto pages, one for each day of the trip. And then when I go ahead and show these, we end up with all my photos laid out in this really beautiful looking layout, really cleanly laid out on here. If you've marked photos with a caption or marked them as a favorite, those photos will be the ones that are preferred into the larger spaces on the screen. It's really easy to adjust this as well. I just touch the edit button in the upper right corner, and I can pick up and move around any of the photos on here. I can grab one, make it larger. I can reframe it on here really easily. So it's really easy to move the photos around. But one of the things that's really great about this is it lets you tell a story along with your photos. And we have some great story elements that you can add. I've got a palette of them up here. I can just grab, drag them in on the screen here. I'll just double tap. I happen to have some text on the clipboard to, as an example there. We have some great other elements I can put in. I have a calendar element that I can drop in, which automatically picks up the date from the photos around it. Same thing for a map. Maps automatically pick up the location of the photos around them. And then you can pinch and pan to align them just how you like. 
We even have a weather item, which is going to use the date and the location to look up the weather for that date. So these are really fun to put together, and they allow you to really put some story around your photos. But once you put this together, they look great on your iPad, but you want to be able to share them. We have a great new sharing option where we can share to a new feature of iCloud, where this gets published up to iCloud, and then you can share a link with your friends and family that they can then view in any web browser on, their, uh, on an iPad or on a laptop any place in the world. So it's really easy to share this with your friends and family. Now, everything that I've shown here can also be done on the iPhone. This is a universal application, so all of the editing, selection, even the journal creation can be done on the iPhone as well. And that is iPhoto for iOS. Thanks very much. <laughs>